Zero accounting software, invoice form. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, holding down control, scrolling up a bit on the mouse wheel to 175% zoom in. I'm gonna open the demo file, but before we do, I'm just gonna reset the information within it that will reset and open the demo file. Once open, we're gonna be opening up the major two financial statements. Gonna hide this balance sheet and income statement that is in a new tab by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it. I'm gonna right click on the duplicated tab and duplicate it again going back to the middle duplicated tab so we can go to the accounting drop down reports open up the balance sheet report one of the faves and then on the tab to the right we're going to go into the accounting drop down reports and this time open up the income statement or profit and loss back to the balance sheet tab we're going to go to the drop down i'm going to change the date to bring it on up to 2022 so the end of 2022 update it back to the first tab so now we've been talking about the revenue cycle the customer cycle the cycle in which we expect at the end of the process to be receiving cash increasing the checking account from customers for goods and services provided if we look at the flow chart you'll recall that we could have multiple different formats depending on the type of industry we are in. The easiest one being we have YouTube or something giving us money or a platform where we might just use a deposit form or we might have a cash register situation being on a cash based system, but not one which we can wait till the deposit clears the bank before recording it or on an accrual based system, which we are talking about now where we will have to do the work first invoice the client and that will increase uh, the accounts payable account and then we'll have to track and get the payment on the payable account so i'm going to go back on over and say all right let's do that process we can go to the drop down here and we've got the invoice this would be the form used if we're going to bill the client and expect to be receiving the money in the future versus the receive money form if we're gonna get paid at the same point in time, such as like with a cash check register, a cash register situation, food truck or something like that. So let's go to the invoice up top, entering an invoice. So we're gonna say this is gonna to go to, let's just make another customer of AAA, so it'll be at the top of the list. We're gonna say December 2nd, invoice number, and that looks good, dollar, okay. And I'm gonna say uh, tax exclusive, Let's actually create another item. Now the items are the things that we actually sell. So we'll talk more about items in the future, but you might be having service items or you might have uh, inventory items. Now, if you don't have an item and you just wanna record the, the dollar amounts over here and assign an account, you may be able to do that, but you're gonna lose a little bit of information in that you can't really track subsidiary reports by item by the thing that you're selling even if that's service item stuff so let's go ahead and add another item as we go and so i'm just going to say let's say add a new item as we go let's just call it test item test item one and i'm going to copy that generic name and paste it here test item one let's say that it has a unit price of uh we're going to say one thousand dollars and the sales account, we're just going to put it to sales, which is a revenue type of account. And then the tax on it, let's say that we have the tax on sale for this item. So I'm going to say there's a tax on the sale for the sales side of things. 
and this tax is going to be dependent on where you're located so you might have the tax on the sale tax on the purchase tax different taxes per the location but usually we're gonna have to, we have to set up the sales tax items to be able to select that we'll, we'll probably dive into that more in the future but now i just want to note that if you have the items set up then that can help you to drive the taxes and we want to see what the tax implications or impacts will be when we record an invoice and then if we want to track the item meaning we're not using a, a periodic system but rather a perpetual system we would turn on the tracking of the item down below we're going to track it to the uh, inventory account and that also adds this item up top on the purchase side of things when we purchase the inventory let's say we purchase it for seven hundred dollars and we sell it for a thousand cost of goods sold is just going to be the cost of goods sold account meaning the account that's going to be expensed when we create uh, the invoice and i'm going to say it's tax exempt on the purchasing side of things that looks good i'm going to say save it now we're not going to have any on hand i might have to include one on hand in order to make the sale but for now let's just think about what this would do if recording it so now we're going to say okay there's the total down here includes the tax so because it's an invoice it's going to increase the accounts receivable it's going to increase the accounts receivable by the full amount including the tax and then the sales is going to be increased by the amount that we charged the one thousand dollars not including the tax go into the sales account of the of the four thousand here which is driven by the fact that we set it up in the item to go to that particular account now the sales tax is not going to go into the income statement generally but rather to a payable account because the idea is that we're not really charging the sales tax whoever's forcing us the government is forcing us to be their tax collector so we're not going to generally record the the sales tax that we collect or are going to collect on the income statement and we're not going to record an expense for sales tax expense because it's going to be an off income statement item it's going to go in and out of a payable account on the balance sheet uh, and then we're going to have the inventory that would be going down by not the thousand dollars in this case but rather the, the 700 dollars price that we would have bought the the inventory for on a perpetual system and the cost of goods sold would be going up which is an expense account related to the inventory for that 700 dollars the net impact on the income statement would be the thousand dollars we charged minus the 700 dollars for the cost of the uh inventory so that's going to be so notice there's a lot going on with just this pretty basic uh invoice and even though there's a lot going on the data input should be fairly straightforward and easy meaning we can allow someone to, to do the data input that doesn't have any understanding really too much of how the thing was set up or the impact on all the accounts in the end result we can see that for example when you check something out on on a self-checkout in like the grocery store there's a lot going on every time you scan something, but if we have the whole system set up, they can do it basically automatically without you needing to know much about what's happening from an accounting standpoint. And, and so that's the beauty of the process. Now note that if you just sold something that wasn't subject to tax and didn't have any inventory related to it, the invoice would generally just be increasing uh, the accounts receivable, the other side going to the sales account. Now, when it increases the accounts receivable, it's also going to be applied out to this customer. So we'll have a sub ledger that we're going to have to track AAA customer and we'll have a sub ledger for the inventory that will be impacted. Now, again, it might not let me record it because I don't have any of that inventory on hand. Also note, though, that you could save it as a draft. You can you can submit for approval and you can save and add another or you can simply go to the straight approval approve and add another and then and and so if you're in a smaller company with less checks you'll probably just approve it but let's go through the process let's save it as a draft so i'm going to save that as a draft and then i'm going to go into my inventory and add a piece of inventory that we can then sell with that one so i'm going to go into the business drop down and let's go into the products and services and we've got our item that we set up. I'm gonna hide this. We've got the item that we set up here, the test item. It's got nothing on hand right now. 
So let's just make an adjustment for that. We talked about adjustments in a prior presentation so that we could put one on hand. I'm gonna add one. So there's currently zero. I'm gonna say there's an increase. Let's just put five of them on hand at the cost of uh, uh, cost price 700. So there, so the new uh, new quantity on hand is gonna be five. And then we're gonna say the adjustment account. I'm just gonna put to cost of goods sold, region, reference. I'm just gonna call it beginning balance. And then I'll say next. So, so the new quantity, new average cost is 700. The, the journal entry that's gonna be in place, inventory is gonna go up by that 3,005. And we've just put the other side to cost of goods sold. So that's just a setup so that we can make the inventory have something to be dealing with. All right, so then let's go back to the drop down, and let's go back to the invoices. So now we have this item here, it's in drafts. So if I go into the drafts, there it is in drafts. Now then I can select it, I can select it here and say that possibly uh, we want to approve it, or I could go into it, clicking on it and say, what's the next step? It went for, it was in a draft, let's let's uh, save and submit for approval save and submit for approval okay so now if i go back in here i say awaiting approval we've got this added step before we have approved it no actual transaction has actually taken place no impact in other words on the balance sheet or income statement as of yet so then i can click this off and i can approve it or i can go into it again and we could we could have just gone originally to just simply approve which will actually record the transaction so let's do that now finally approve it and that will move it of course from if i hit the drop down invoices the awaiting approval to uh to the approved items which are awaiting payment so we go into awaiting payment there it is so we haven't yet received payment the next step of course when we get the payment what, you know, we could check it off and say that we've got a deposit for it, or I can go into it here and then go down and say there's the amount uh, paid to. But we'll get into that in a future presentation. For now, I'm going to go back and I just want to look at what the impact of that invoice is on our financial statements. Because again, it's fairly complex. Let's go into the update of the balance sheet. We know that the accounts receivable should go up. No impact on cash yet. There will be when we receive the payment. For the invoice we sent out so i'll go into the accounts receivable and we'll scroll down to the uh there it is so there it is it's notice it's it's a receive invo receivable invoice that's what the source recording is it's useful to see that source and know what that means the other side is going to the sales and sales tax notice it's split here and it's actually given us the two accounts that are that are impacted that's really pretty neat you don't see that in other software like uh, like QuickBooks, for example, if there's more than two accounts affected, it'll just say split over here. So it actually gives you uh, a little bit more detail in that case, Not maybe not all the detail because there's possibly cost of goods sold in inventory effect, but that's kind of neat. So let's go into that. That takes us to the source document. If you wanted to edit it, you can hit the drop down and you can edit it from here and that that looks like the screen we saw before so of course the full amount is here not now zero 1092.50 if i go back and i go back again so now i'm back to here i'm going to go back one more time and we're going to go back to the balance sheet now the other side is on the income statement next tab over i'm going to update the income statement get this thing out of here and that went to sales driven by the item telling it to go to sales for the revenue side of things and then down here I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom we've got our transaction there it is again notice that only the $1,000 went into here if I go into it it doesn't include the sales tax that's just what we charged so I'm gonna go back and then go back again the sales tax should go into a balance sheet account back to the balance sheet in a liability account here sales tax this is something that we're gonna have to pay so we're collecting money from the customers but we're just being the tax collector with regards to sales tax 
that's why it's going to a payable account. It's not part of our revenue in theory, right? And then we're going to pay it because because we're not going to record a revenue and an expense when we pay it. We're just going to record it as a payable when we collect it. And then when we have to pay the sales tax, we'll pay it out in a future date. We'll talk about that more later. So let's go back and back. And then we've got the inventory also impacted. So we put the inventory on the books and now the inventory is impacted. So if I go into the inventory and scroll down, we see the 700 right there. So there it is. And notice it's 700. Notice that that amount, the 700 that is of course, is not actually on the invoice. But we know about it because we set it up. It was in the item. It was in the item that we set up. So that's what the system knows. It's just like when you scan something at a grocery store and the store, you know, you don't know what the store paid for it. You don't know the journal entry related to the cost that the store paid. You only know the sales price that you're paying. Okay, so then we're gonna go back and the other side of that is gonna go to the income statement in the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is gonna be here and we should see that 700 there as well so there it is so the net impact on the net income of the income statement is going to be the 1000 that increased minus the 700 dollars increase in the expense the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold being a really special expense because if you sell inventory it's going to be one of the largest expenses typically and it's the cost of us consuming the inventory in order to generate you know the sales we we gave the inventory away in order to generate revenue okay so then if we go back to the balance sheet we also have the sub ledger accounts related to receivables and inventory so i need to see the receivable broken out not by date as i would see if i drill down onto the general ledger transaction account but by customer so I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right just to see it in report format, right clicking on it and duplicating this tab. And then let's go into the accounting. Let's go into the reports and just open up the sub report to see how this works. So we'll go into the payables and receivables, the, the aged receivable summary. Let's do that one. So we'll go into that. And I'll change the date to the end of December. The end of December and update. So now we have AAA owing us one nine uh, one zero nine two fifty, and the total down here for all the the customers ten thousand two sixty five thirteen. That should match what's on the balance sheet ten thousand two sixty five thirteen. Now. That's useful to note. We, we might not always go to this report to see who owes us the money, but if we're reporting it externally, that's a good tool. And the total tying out over here is a good tool for us to visualize what is happening. Internally, when we're trying to collect on the receivables, we're probably gonna go first tab to either hitting the drop down here in the business side of things and invoices. That's gonna show us you know, the invoices that we looked at. So we've got the awaiting payments and we can sort our invoices this way. We could sort by, you know, to date, the due date and so on and try to see who owes us money so we can collect on it. And we can also use this area to send statements, right? I can select these and send out the statements to try to say, hey, look, you guys owe us money and so on. So we saw that in a prior presentation and we might also go to the contact drop down and the customers here. So we're in the customers. Notice I have the drop down up top. If I scroll down a bit, I've got the tabs up top. If I scroll up just a hair more, I got the drop down. And there's our AAA customer. <laughs> My voice is cracking. If I go into that, so there it is. So there's the invoice that's awaiting payment. So if I'm talking to a particular person, I'd be like, hey, look, there's the invoice. We can attach something here, of course. We've got the options up top and we can edit the customer. We also have new transactions, sales invoice, sales credit, repeating sales invoice, and so on within a particular contact zone as well. Let's go back to the balance sheet and look at the inventory now. 
which also should have a subsidiary report if we're not on a perpetual system, but a, if we're not on a periodic system, but on a perpetual inventory system, tracking the inventory in the system. Let's go to the last tab. I'm going to duplicate it again. And so we can open up another report in a new tab again. How many tabs are you going to have? This is crazy. There's stuff all over the place. I'm just going to type it in here. Inventory. Tor inventory. And I'll say the inventory item summary. Inventory item summary. Let's look at that one. The new version. And so this is going to be as of the end of the period. So th this is the activity that we put into place. We added the 3,500 and then we had the cost of goods sold that was the activity that happened. Now again, I don't think they put the beginning balances over here on the balance sheet. So we've got the 2,800 right here, which represents the pulling out the trusty calculator, the 1,000, I'm sorry, we put on seven, 7,000 on the books minus uh, the, the, no, we put on the books, let me try that again, 700 times five, 3,500, that's what we put on the books when I just added those five units, minus the 700 that we, we had a cost of goods sold for. So we'll, we'll talk more about the tracking of, of this sub, subsidiary report in the second half of the course. But just note that the general idea being that we should have a backup or support of this number uh, in terms of the inventory units if we're tracking the inventory in the system on a perpetual inventory basis. So that's the general idea with the invoice. There's actually a lot going on with the invoice, especially if you have taxes and you have the and you have uh, inventory. But if you set it up properly, it's still quite easy to do the data input. Next time, we'll talk about the next step, which would be to receive repayment on the invoice.